Hey guys, happy Friday. Let me move this out of the way. Technology. Eat gads. I'm using Jean Howard's cell phone. And because, for whatever reason, mine will not let Amy Howard at home come up on my cell phone. So I'm like, Jean, let me borrow your phone so I can do this. So, um, I get so many questions about glazing. What is glazing? When would I use glazing? Do I have to wax after glazing? I'm afraid to do something that deals with glazing. So, um, hey Dawn. So this is why I take out time on Fridays to be able to go over with you different techniques um, because I talk about raising your level of connoisseurship. Hey Ruthie. And so by doing that, what I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to start um, even for your own learning ability, you're layering techniques. And so as you start to look at pieces of furniture or your kitchen cabinets or your kitchen um, island or maybe your bar stools or anything in your house that you want to be able to transform, that you're, you can look at it now and go, I could do that to this because you're learning. You're investing in your education and raising your level of connoisseurship up. So, hey Karen, hey Maggie, hey Ruthie, hey everybody, hey Dawn, hey Denise. Y'all know the drill. So, what I love for you to do is just to tell me where you're coming from, send me some, um, send me some love, some hearts, and I would love for you um, to tag three friends on this video. Let me tell you why. I've started doing this with our sister company, um, a maker studio, but I thought it would be fun for you to tag three friends on the video today, and guess what? I'm gonna send you a free can of glazing, glazed over, glazing liquid, because that's what I'm talking about today. So if you'll tag three friends on this video, your name will go on a drawing, and on Monday, we will announce the winner of the free glazed over, because this is definitely a product that you need in your DIY kind of arsenal or DIY pantry, I like to call it. I do a lot of projects in my book, Rescue, Restore, Redecorate, with Glazed Over. And if I can say this for just a minute, it was the weirdest thing. I was just scrolling through Instagram the other day and um, I saw these Russian words, which it was the first time I had ever seen anybody. Um, hey, Stella. Hey, hey guys. Hey, Dawn. It, the first time I'd ever seen anything in Russian, and you know, lo and behold, my book, Rescue, Restore, Redecorate, had been translated into Russian and was being distributed throughout Russia. And I thought, how weird is that? Some girl from Memphis, Tennessee, who likes to rescue and restore furniture, is now being able to reach people in Russia that want to be able to learn how to rescue and restore furniture too. And so many times it, it may not be necessarily that you weren't curb shopping, meaning you got something on the side of the road, but maybe you're changing your color palette, kind of like I did last week when we lacquered my lamps brown. Sorry, the pink didn't work anymore. All right, so if you're popping on, tell me where you're from, tag three friends, and your name will go in the drawing, and I'm going to send you a free can of glazed over on Monday. And so, I've got a piece of trim here. I've got tons of stuff here. <laughs> I've got to move it around because I don't have a cameraman. And y'all know I used to have all these lights, and I had all these camera people, and all that stuff. And I thought, and but I never got to see you. Um, I didn't get to see your names. And I am one of those people. I'm very relational and I like to be able to connect with you and I want to be able to make sure that you're successful in the projects that you're doing. So you've got me. If you're catching me live, it is, um, this is central, we're coming from Memphis, Tennessee, Central Standard Time. So you can ask questions and I'll be turning this video, this camera down to be able to show you what I'm doing and then I'll be turning it up and I'll try to answer your questions. And then I'll go on Facebook Live later and I will answer your questions. So please ask questions. Oh, that's so exciting, Ruthie, that you just put the glazy liquid in your cart. I'm just going to tell you guys, I don't want this to be something that you get nervous about. Um, 
as I'm going to be going in and teaching you things like travertine and tortoiseshell and um, lapis and a lot more complicated kind of more jewel type finishes, you're going to need and understand glazing liquid because glazing liquid allows you to be able to do that. Water will not allow you to do that. You're going to need glazing liquid. So um, what we're going over today, it's called glazed over, just because I'm weird and I like to name things. I have the best time naming things, naming colors. I said something the other day and I was like, um, I need to be sure and, and use that. I need to remember to use that as a, um, as a name. Well, hey, Karen, welcome newbie. My name is Amy Howard and I am the founder of Amy Howard at Home and I do finish Fridays to teach people how to rescue and restore furniture and cabinets and kitchens and floors and everything. So um, today I'm going over Glazed Over. If you tag three friends, your name will go on a drawing and we'll have the giveaway on Monday um, for this Glazed Over. It's just a great product to have in your arsenal. All right, so now I'm gonna have to turn the camera down. I can't see all you precious people for just a second because I need to show you something. So I'm gonna turn this down. And so I have a piece of trim that I painted that I had showed y'all a few weeks ago. And, but I wanna show you how it looks so, and how it can be uh, transformed. Now, let me show you what this color is. This is a new color. If you wanna know about what's the difference between our old formula and our new formula, this is what the new formula is gonna look like. It's always gonna have this can. It's gonna be this design, half furniture and um, a rescue on one side and finished on the other. And unfinished and so this is a gorgeous color it's called Waybridge white can you see that Waybridge white it's a warm white I love it it goes with anything um, and when you are glazing it's important that you don't want to do too much contrast so when working with Waybridge white as my first coat I don't I don't want to do hold on it's like here's the teacher in me have to talk to you. I don't want you to put too stark of a color on top of this. When you're dealing with glazes, you want to make sure that um, it's called LRV. The light reflective value isn't too contrasty. So you wouldn't want to do a Weybridge white as your base coat and then do a black glaze on top of it. As a rule, you would want to go with more of a middle value gray or a much warmer color. I like putting pale, like paler blues, like French blues. Today, I am gonna go with a little darker color. I'm gonna use Kimball. You can tell I've used this quite a bit. I'm gonna make a glaze out of Kimball. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on top of the Weybridge White. But then I'm also gonna take a lighter color, which is a Parisian gray, and I should have a blue. If I don't, I'm gonna go get one because I wanna show you how beautiful it can be. So one thing you just need to remember, hey Brenda, hey friend, hey Dawn, hey Denise, tag three friends on this video guys and your name will go into a drawing to win a free can of Glazed Over. Um, I may have to just run over in a minute. I'll do the Kimball first and then I wanna go get a, a kind of a grayish blue to be able to show you what it looks like. So the main thing is a bright glare. Oh, uh, the lighting is causing a bright glare on the piece. You mean a glare when I'm actually glazing? Um, Catherine, I'm so glad Weybridge White, White is one of your favorites. Let me see. Hmm. Let me, okay, two sec. Let me go get my, let me go get my laptop. Um, can y'all talk amongst yourselves for just a minute? Hey, no, wait a minute. I'll take my phone with me. So that way, I'll go in here and I'll get my laptop. I know, I think what the deal is, and I don't know if y'all heard me in the beginning, um, Gene's phone is cracked. He cracked, he dropped it and he cracked his screen. And so I'm using his phone and, um, my phone doesn't, my phone isn't, isn't cracked, but I can't get on the Amy Howard at home site. So I'll just take in a walk with me around my studio and I will put, I'll try to see if I can connect this light and see if that will help just a little bit. Cause part of the reason why I do these finished Fridays is where y'all can learn, hang with me, learn how to do these finishes. So sorry. Okay, let's try this. Let's see if this is gonna help just a little bit. Turn this light on, hang with me. How's everybody going? Are you having a good Friday? Do you have any plans for this weekend? 
You know, I had some um, sweet friends surprised me with a um, with a birthday thing last night that I didn't know about. Hopefully, that's not too bad of a glare. Still, let me know if it, if it is. And um, it was outside, and the weather was divine. So it was it was definitely um, it was definitely fally kind of weather. And tomorrow, the high in Memphis is only 77 degrees. So out came the fall clothes. Kind of gets me excited. All right. It's like there's a reflection. I am so sorry. That may be because of Jean. So I'm going to turn this, this phone, Jean's phone. Sorry, not Jean. Jean didn't do anything wrong. All right. So I'm going to turn this down. Let's get like this. And let's see. Okay. I need to, I need y'all to tell me, is there a reflection? Are you able to see this okay? And I'm going to look up in just a minute. Tell me if this is okay. Can you see it? Say yes or no, and then I'm going to look at it. It's not sure. Ready for fall. Tell me if that if that's good. What I just did, is it good? I'm going to turn it around because I'm going to start mixing up glazes. We've got to do glazing. I've got to hurry up. I can't keep having technical difficulties. It's better. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for it's better now. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's turn this around. So we're gonna talk about glazing. If you're catching me live, um, I if you tag three friends, your name goes in for drawing and we're gonna send you out a free can of this glazed over. So now, let me show you what a glaze. There's different glazes that you can make. And this glazing liquid, as you see, I'm gonna stir it up so that way you can see it. It's a milky consistency become um, basically a part of whatever you use it with. And so today I'm going to show you how to be able to make a paint glaze that you can put on top of some kitchen cabinets on a piece of furniture. And so I have poured in some glazing liquid into this container. Gotta, I've got to get this up high enough so I know that y'all are, are y'all are seeing what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got my glazing liquid. Now, there's something else that I'm going to need. I'm going to need some just regular tap water. That's all this is. So, as a rule, if I am making a glaze that I'm going to put on top of maybe some kitchen cabinets or a piece of furniture, depending on um, how thin or how dark I want it to be, I will usually do one part glazing liquid, one part, two parts water. Now, I've done this long enough. Um, it's kind of like cooking. It's like a pinch of salt. And then this is um, the color. This is actually called Kimball. Can you see that? This is Kimball. I've used it a lot, so it's it's kind of looking kind of yucky inside. So I'm going to take my Kimball. I'm going to add this. So now what's happening, I'm making a colored glaze. Now, if you're just now popping on, please tag free, three friends. And your name will go into a drawing that we'll be sending out some free glazing liquid to you on Monday. So let me pour a little bit of this in here. All right, so I've got one part glazing liquid, one part Kimball, one step, and one part water. So I am mixing this all up together. You want to stir it really good. So just give it a minute. You're in no hurry. And now you've got a colored glaze. This glaze allows you to be able to go over an existing piece that you've already painted. So, this piece of trim has already been cleaned with Clean Slate, and I put on a coat of Weybridge White. So, I'm going to show you the Weybridge White. It has just one coat of Weybridge White. If I say that tr three times really fast, my tongue gets twisted. Weybridge White. <laughs> And I have taken one part glazing liquid, one part Kimball One Step Paint, and one part water. And I'm mixing it together. Is everybody with me? Hold on just a second. Here are the teachers in me. I gotta, okay, is everybody with me thus far? So in order to make a glaze, a glaze is used on top of something that you have already painted. So you can put one or two coats of your original color on your piece of furniture. Then you can come back with the glaze. The glaze is gonna give you depth. You're gonna be able to pull a little bit of it through so that way you can see this color a little bit underneath. 
and it is a glazing process. Some people call this modeling. Um, some people call it um, glazing. Some people call it antiquing. So let's say you have a piece that's a dark red. What would you come on top of it? You would come on top of it with a either darker, darker red that you've added maybe a little black to, or you could even make a black glaze, which would be one part glazing liquid, one part just regular tap water, and one part black one step. The glazing liquid is water-based. It is not oil-based, so you're going to clean it with soap and water. That's as simple as that. Thank you all for sharing. Thank you. We have it to where every time we do a Facebook Live, the product that we're talking about, which today is glazed over, if you tag three friends, your name goes in the drawing, and we're going to ship you a free can of glazed over. So that way you're going to be able to know what to do. If you aren't part of our Facebook group, Before and After group, please join. It is such a sweet community of people that... I love how somebody will ask a question about what should I do about this or how should I do my kitchen cabinets and that type of thing. And it's like um, people jump in and they show them. Um, so it's, it's sweet. If you aren't part of that group, it's just our free before and after Facebook group. Um, okay, now Amy's saying you said two parts of water before, not one part. Can you explain? Absolutely. Guys, somebody answer the question. Let's, let's all, because if I ask then that way you'll have a tendency to remember a little bit more. Um, you, why would I put one part water versus two parts water? I'm still doing the same thing. I'm still using glazing liquid. I'm still using one step paint, but I'm only doing one part, one part of water. Why? Why would I do one part of water instead of two? And that definitely, Amy, what a great question. This is an option. So I wanted my glaze and this color, this this kind of cocoa, it's kind of a cocoa-y taupe, taupe cocoa color. This Kimball, which is one of my favorites, it's a great seller. It will make it more opaque. Hey, Brittany, how are you? That is true. So, you can do two parts of water, and sometimes I do. If I do maybe a darker color, I may do two parts of water. So you have an option. If you want your glaze a little thicker, so that way it is going to be a little bit more opaque, you can do one part water, one part glaze, and one part one step. If you want it to be a little thinner so you don't see it as much, and you're gonna see that underneath color, you can do two parts water, one part um, glazed over, and then one part paint. Is everybody with me? Yes. So the main thing is, is to, you're, you're making it th you're you're making it a little bit thicker, and a lot of that is because of my color. So it's all up to you. Now, as your teacher, as your mother maker, I tell you the way with everything. Experiment first. Never ever ever experiment on the piece that you're going to be painting on. Go to Habitat for Humanity. Go to Goodwill. Go to Home Depot. Get some trim and practice on this trim first. That way you know exactly what it is that you're gonna to wanna to be doing. You make notes along beside the time of it, and then that way you know, then you can start on your piece. So this is painted Weybridge White, one of my new favorite colors in the brand new formula, the One Step Paint. Now let's glaze. So I've gotta turn this around again. If you're just now popping on, Please, please, please tag three friends and your name will go into a drawing for Monday. We are going to be giving away a can of glazed over. Absolutely free. So, I want to make sure that you can see me. Can you see me? It's like, where? Where is that? It's white. It's like white on white, isn't it? All right. So, I'm going to take this off because I'm going to do a couple of different sections and I want you to be able to see. Now, I do this more for me, and to be able to show you kind of the differences, you want to burnish it. So here's my Kimball paint, one part glaze, one part one step Kimball, and one part water. And I'm going to use a chip brush. Now, when you're glazing, I want you to have at least two brushes and a lint-free rag. Why is that? Because one brush is going to be your applicator, 
and one brush is going to be what you're going to take it off with. So this will be a positive tool and this one is going to be a negative tool. Make sure they're completely dry and when you're working with waxes and things, don't use brushes for glazing because this is a water-based product that you would use for your wax, okay? So you really need to have wax brushes and then you need to have brushes that you can use that you just paint with. All right. Thank y'all for popping on. Tell me where you're, you're watching from and tag three friends. That way your name is going to go into a drawing that we will give the, a, a container of glazed over away on Monday. All right, so now I'm just stirring this up. I'm making sure that this chip brush gets loaded up. When I am glazing, I don't use synthetic brushes. I use our chip brushes, um, which I know that they are, they are back in stock. We, um, I know our two inches are. So I'm just loading this up, and I'm going to come here. Can y'all see me? Do I need to come back? Let me see. Okay. So I'm going to load this up. It doesn't take a whole lot. I'm just wanting to kind of get over it like this. My original color was Weybridge. So when you're doing glazing, you're going over an existing color. Can you glaze something that's stained that's just regular wood? Absolutely you can. All right, so the first thing I normally do after I've laid, laid my glaze on, I'll come back with a lint-free rag and I'll just, can y'all see that? Is there a glare? Can you see? I will kind of pat over it. It's a hit drag motion. Look at that. Hit drag, hit drag, hit drag, hit drag. And look at the other thing. You see now, if this gets too loaded up, what happens? It becomes a positive tool. So you wanna make sure that you continue to move your rag around like this to where it's clean and it's not saturated with too much paint. So that way you're modeling it or glazing it. This is what the glazing liquid allows you to be able to do. The cool thing about it is the glazing liquid has properties in it that you don't have to seal this afterwards. Now, I gotta look at what y'all are saying. Okay, okay, can you see this? Can you see this? Now, I'm getting ready to do a very important step. And you need to work fairly quickly. Did you see how quickly I worked when I was applying it and then as I was dabbing it off? I want you to work in sections and need to angle it down. I know this phone, guys, I am so sorry. So can you see? I want to make sure that you can see this. So sorry. Can you see? Hold on. Okay, yeah, there's a real glare. So sorry. All right, so now I've got my clean brush. And I am dabbing down into the crevices where the glaze would get saturated. That's the only way or area I'm doing that. And I do need to come back and kind of touch that up just a little bit because I don't want it to get too, too dark. Now, that's why you're seeing how this was just a little bit darker. Now, I want you to see the difference. When you're talking about glazing and what glazing can do, this is my Weybridge White, and this is my glaze. Now, I want to show you something. I'm going to now come back. I'm going to tape over this. Now I'm going to tape over it. Would you move your over, the glare goes away. When you move your arm over, the glare goes away. Lands a Goshen. Glaze is coming from the window. Okay, hold on a second. Okay. Hold on. How's that? Did the glare go away? Did the glare go away? Tell me, guys. There's something in with Jean's phone that causes a glare. Did it go away? Now I want to show you something else. Say, yes, Amy, the glare went away. No, Amy, the glare didn't go away. Bad glare. Still, there's still, 
On the flat surface, it looks amazing. Did the glare go away? Let me give it two seconds. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some hearts. Say, Amy, the glare went away. The glare went away. No, it didn't go away. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. Guys, I've never had this much trouble. All right. It's across your face now. That's Jean's phone. There's something wrong with Jean's phone. Um, okay. All right, so I'm showing you this. Can you see this by this way? It's still there. Gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, you can't see it when you are doing it. No, the glare is still there. We can't see when you lower the camera. I am so sorry. You're illuminated. I think it's coming from behind you. We've got to fix this. Y'all know me. I am not one of those people. No, I think it's Jean's phone. Because I can, I can kind of see the glare. It's like when I move it. Hold on. If I go this way, hold on. Is it still there? Yes. I think it's Jean's phone. Jean. Yes, you can see it now? Can you see it now? I'll move everything over. Y'all are absolutely the cutest and the sweetest. You can see it now. Yay! Okay. Victory. Victory. Okay, now. Can you see it? Now, here's our before. This is the Weybridge White. Looks like there's a ghost on my face. I'm going to get the aware of my phone. So, you can see it. Okay, so there was the before. Here it is after. This is the Weybridge White. And you think it's the light from above me? I don't know. Help me, Hannah. I don't think that light is strong enough. I turned my light off. So anyway, so um, close the blind behind you. I did. That's better. All right, I'm going to do this one more time. Hold on. Did that help? What? I think it's Jean's foam. It's much better. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Much better. Okay, good. Thanks for hanging with me, guys. All right. It's not as bad now. It must be your wing showing. <laughs> oh, y'all are so precious. Okay. Close the window blind, but this is better. I did close the, the blind. It's okay. We can still see. Okay. All right. So, this is Weybridge White. I made the glaze up of one step Kimball, one step water, one, one part water, glazing liquid or glazed over, and the one step in Kimball. All right? So, now this is what I want to show you. i got to turn it down again because I want you to be able to see this. So, I've got this next section, and I want to be able to show you the difference. So, now, I did this with one part water. Now, I'm going to add two parts water to it. So if you're just now popping on, I'm going over glazed over today. You can kind of see the can. And if you tag three friends, we're going to, your name will go into a drawing. And on Monday, we're going to draw it and we're going to mail this to you absolutely free. And that includes shipping. You, all you have to do is tag three friends. So now I'm going to add another part of water. So guess what? Now it's one step. It's one part Kimball one step. Kimball is the color one part glazed over, and two parts water. So what's that going to do? That's going to make it considerably thinner. Look at this. See how much thinner that is? But it's still a glaze, and because of the, the one-step paint, and because of the glazed over durability, it's going to be, um, you don't have to do anything to this afterwards. You don't have to wax it, you don't have to seal it with anything, it's done. All right, so I'm going to take my, my brush. I'm going to load it up. I'm going to lay some of this on. When you are working on a piece of furniture, guys, I want you to work quickly. So you need to work on a drawer at a time. You need to work on a top. You need to work on a door. Don't put the glaze over the whole thing. You're going to work in sections because that's going to allow you to be able to keep control over it because this glaze will dry. So very quickly, the next thing you want to do is you're going to take a lint-free lint rag and you're going to model over it like this. 
So I'll get down in the crevices as much as I can. So it's kind of a hit drag motion. Then I need to come back with my clean chip brush and I need to get around the crevices that it will kind of go into. I can, sh I can use that to shadow it around it. I don't want to get all of it out, but I'll just allow that to be kind of what makes it look like it's shadowed. Now, let me take my tape off so you can see the difference. So we've got a little bit of a um, kind of a tan line. I'll fill that in just a little bit. So this is when I had one part water and see by adding the glaze, adding two parts water, do you see the difference? So here's the before, this is Weybridge White. I made up a glaze right here of Kimball One Step with one part water and one part glazing liquid and one part paint. That's this darker glaze. I just added twice as much water and see what it does? It gives me a totally different color. Does everybody let me see what you're saying? Does that make sense? So when you think about a color and you think about the variations and what you can create just with one color, it's crazy. And what this does, this really will give you a lot more depth. Um, it's gonna take your level of doing finishes and things to a whole new level. Now, I'm gonna show you something else. Should I? Should I take you to the next level? I wanted you to see, here's just Weybridge White. Here it is with two parts water, making my glaze, one part glazing, uh, glazed over, one part Kimball paint, two parts water, and then this one is one part glazing, glazed over, one part Kimball, and one part water. So it shows you the variance and how different it can look. Now I wanna show you something else. I may be blowing y'all's mind with this and you're like, why would you confuse them? But it's fun to learn new things. Okay, so guess what? See this? These are called mica colors. This is a copper color. Mm -hmm. This is mica. This is scary, y'all. The mica, do the mica powder scare you? I don't want them to. Because they're really, really, really cool with glazed over. Sorry. Me, I've asthma. So I drink water and it just kind of when I'm talking, kind of calms it down. Let me read some of these comments. All right, so Leslie is saying, what is better for a flatter, less detailed service? Wax instead or to still try the glaze? Glaze is just different. Glaze is gonna give you a totally different look. Experiment with it, I promise. It's gonna take your finishing to a whole new level um, you can use it on carved pieces. You can use it, you can do a street A effect. If you work quickly where it's modeled, I think it gives it a, a lot of depth. Just, you would probably want to do it with a thinner glaze. Don't have the glaze too thick. So that way you may have a little bit more water in it. Um, but that's why I love experimenting. And, and I love showing you to be able to have before with nothing and then two, two glazes. All right. So let me show you. Let me turn this around just a little bit so you gotta see what I'm doing. So I've got a container here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of my glazed over. And then I'm gonna take um, some copper mica. Now, believe it or not, this copper mica is used in um, bronzing liquids. They use it in, in uh, facial cosmetics. I can just turn it and I'll break the seal on it. You can mix these mica powders with wax, and you can also mix them with glazing liquid. So I thought it would just be fun for just a minute to show you, since we're talking about glazing liquid today, to take some of this copper mica and show you how you can be empowered to make glazes. Can you see this? Look at this. Let's stir this baby up. So all I'm working with is glazed over 
and copper mica powders. Ta-da! Can you see that? Look at that. Now you've got a copper glaze. You can make pearl glazes. You can make bronze glazes. Now, I will tell you, that's and this is just done with glazed over and the mica powders. Let me tell you about a piece that I did. So, um, I did a black piece, a black piece of furniture, and it was just in the regular one-step uh, black. And then I took the bronze, it's, there's a bronze mica powder. Take the bronze mica powder and mix it with the glazed over and glaze it just like I showed you with the one-step. But all you need is one part of the mica and two parts of this glaze, and it's gonna make you a gorgeous metallic glaze. Doesn't that blow your mind? It's like so exciting. Okay, let me turn this around, I'm gonna show you. So here is my, I have like a total mess going on here. So let me get my clean brush. Remember when you're glazing, you always wanna have two brushes. You wanna have one brush that you are actually glazing with, you're gonna be applying it with, and this will have a tendency to separate a little bit. So every few minutes, you'll shake it up or you just kinda of agitate it with your stirrer, and then that way it won't separate. And the life on this is probably good for about six months to a year, so you won't have any problems. So that way you could make them up, you can make your own colors. So here's gonna be my brush, and that yummy. Here's gonna be my brush with my copper. And I'm just going to show you as far as putting on top of it. Normally, as a rule, I would not put copper on top of Weybridge White. I would put more probably of a pearl color, but I just wanted to be able to show you. So you want to apply it in sections. Don't do too much at a time because it's going to have a tendency to dry on you. I want you to take a lint-free rag. Work fairly quickly. And then that way, blot it off. Sometimes as I'm working on it too, I'll have a brush that is always dry and it will lift the paint like this. It'll lift it. So it's kind of a two part process because especially if you're working on carved surfaces to build in. And this would actually be so much prettier if it was on a little bit darker color but I thought I'd just kind of show you why you were here. So that way I'm gonna have a complete metallic glaze. But again, I love doing bronze metallic glaze and silver glazes over darker colors. So the main thing I wanted you to be able to see today is you can really up your game by learning how to use the glazed over Here's just a simple painted piece right here. This is white that I painted with the one step before I went live. And then all you need to do is take this glazed over, mix it with water, it's water-based, it has no VOCs, stir it up really good, pour some in, have one part glazed over, one part water, one part of your one step paint or your mica, play with the consistency of it. You might like it a little bit thinner and um, you can make a huge difference in how you do different finishes on your furniture just with glazes. So, I also do glazes on top of lacquer, believe it or not. It's not gonna keep it as bright. I'll come back after I do a glaze for texture, for visual texture, and then seal it with Bright Idea. So, I want you to play, I want you to experiment, and I want you to see this can be so easy. Thank you for your patience with the glare problem today. <laughs> but please, if you're watching the replay, do hashtag replay, send me some love, and it's not too late. You can tag friends. If you watch this all weekend, tag three friends, and your name will automatically go in for the drawing for the free glazed over, and it will be announced on Facebook and Instagram on Monday. So tag three friends, let's share the love, and I'll see you at the estate sales this weekend. I'll definitely have my mask on, but I'll see you there. Bye guys.